Okay, 24 and 48, starting off the readathon with my buddy read with Britta, SPQR by Mary Beard. My Irish readathon read, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. And this book here, Long Bright River by Liz Moore, just because I want to. It's kind of a mystery. Um, so it might fit in for March Mystery Madness. And then those things I've already started. Um, I need to get to my middle grade March, One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. And then start this one, my buddy read with Doris, Shark Drunk. So that ought to keep me busy in the next two days. Where's the spring they keep talking about? So it's about 1.30 on Saturday afternoon, and I have been reading a lot. I've gotten about four, almost five hours of reading done so far today, and it's been very successful. So I didn't mention it this morning, but yesterday I finished The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee by David Truer. Um, this was my last book I needed to read for this round of the Book Two Prize, so I'm not going to talk about it, but um, it was... Yeah, I just wanted to say that I finished it last night. And then this morning I woke up and I started with this book, SPQR, um, which is a nonfiction book about the history of Rome by Mary Beard. And I am buddy reading this with Britta and I needed to read chapter 10 this morning uh, to check in with her today for our buddy read because we're reading a chapter every two days and so I sat down and did that first thing this morning it took me about an hour so got that done and that was really good that was all about basically it was sort of an overview chapter of 200 years worth of emperors but it was really good and then I am listening to an audiobook which I think I forgot to mention so when I took my walk this morning um I listened to that for oh I was outside walking for like maybe 40 minutes or something. So by the time I got back in and got myself settled, I had listened to about an hour of the audiobook. And the audiobook is um, Hello Stranger, which is book four in the Ravenel romance series by Lisa Kleypas. And oh, it's just delightful. <laughs> it really is. Um, I'll probably be going back to listening to that a little bit later. Um, I then read the first three chapters of this book, Shark Drunk, which is my buddy read with Doris. Um, and I think that's going to be good uh, because I finished The Heartbeat of Wounded Knee last night. That sort of left a slot open for a new nonfiction book. And that's going to be my nonfiction read. Um, so I'm excited about that one because I think it's going to be a lot of nature writing, which you guys know I love. And then for the last over two hours, I've been finishing this book. Oh. The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. Oh my God, you guys, this book is amazing. I know, everybody knew this already. They've already read it. I'm late to the party. Um, I had picked this one to read for um, the Irish Readathon happening this month. And um, I started at the beginning of the month. Alicia and I were buddy reading it because of things that were happening in both Alicia and I's lives, plus the coronavirus stuff. It just wasn't working out as a buddy read for either of us. So I had sort of set this one aside for well over a week. And then I figured today was a great day to pick it up. Well, once I started, I couldn't stop. And I just basically read the second half of this book. I was about halfway through it when I picked it up this morning. And oh, it just, it's so good, guys. It's so good. So just briefly, this is um, about uh, our main character, Cyril. And he is... A man born in 1945 in Dublin, Ireland, and he is gay. And so it's all about his life from 1945 until the present, his entire lifespan, everything that happens to him, everything that he gets up to. So it's sort of one of these books where 
you know, lots of big pieces of history happen during this man's lifetime, but it's not about those pieces of history. It's just about how one person's life basically intersects with that. And because Cyril is gay, and of course that's not acceptable in Ireland at the time when he's born, um, what he has to live through, um, what he has to hide about himself growing up in that environment, and then what happens to him when he becomes an adult. So good. It's just so good. You know, Cyril is not a perfect character. He is has his flaws. I'm going to put that down now because it's quite heavy. Um, he has his flaws and all of that. And um, sorry, my arm was getting tired. He has his flaws, but he's just so realistic. He just feels very human and very much like somebody you might know. And it just made for a very engrossing, really heartwarming and heartbreaking read. So yeah, definitely awesome. Just makes me wish I had picked it up even sooner. So that's where I'm at. That's my update here. Sort of halfway through the day, I feel very good about how much reading I've gotten done. Um, and I will check in with you later. It's Sunday morning and I just thought I better do a check-in as to how Saturday went for reading. So it went pretty well. I got about six hours of reading in, which is amazing considering how scatterbrained I've been over the last week or so. Um, that's the most sustained reading I've done in a long time and it felt really good. And I talked to you about finishing Hearts Invisibly Furies and then uh, last night I worked on reading more of Shark Drunk. Um, nonfiction about trying to catch uh, a Greenland shark in Norway and it's super great very uh, fun to read lots of stuff about marine life which I of course am really interested in um, I think I read through the first eight or nine chapters last night and uh, found it really good and then today I've been mostly focusing on um, my audiobook of Dear Stranger by Lisa Kleypas and it is awesome distraction right now if anybody out there is you know, at all interested in romance novels, I would highly recommend the Ravenel series. And I think book four is fantastic. Um, the heroine is a doctor, one of the first female doctors of the time. It's in the late 1800s, like 1876, I think is when the book takes place. So there's lots of talk about what being a doctor was like at that time, not only just being a female doctor, but what the state of medicine was at the time, the state of the science fascinating. Um, there's also a plot line that involves um, uh, the conflict between um, English and Irish um, and the Irish who wanted home rule um, and all of that. So that's in there as well. Not to mention lots of tidbits, historical tidbits about what transportation was like at the time, what industry was like at the time, and I'm just loving it. Not to mention a great romance with two very likable characters. So definitely highly recommend that. And I, I probably will finish um, Hello Stranger today. I mean, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> I'm really into it. And I think I'm on chapter 19 or something of a 25 or 26 chapter book. So I'll probably be finishing that. And then I sat down and started One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia this morning. This is my pick for middle grade um, March. Finally getting to that. I think I read like the first 50 pages or so this morning. I sat down and read this. This is the story of these three um, sisters who get sent from their home in New York to visit their mom who um, left them when they were very small, um, who's now living out in Oakland, California. So they fly for the first time. 
um, out to stay with her. So, you know, we've gone through the, the plane flight and what that was like, and then first meeting with their mother, and now what's happening as they try to establish some kind of situation where they can all uh, get along for 30 days while they live with her in California. And um, this takes place in 1968, so it's amidst the backdrop of civil rights movement and um, the Black Panther movement uh, are, is going to play a role in the story. Very, very good so far. Um, lots of funny moments and also um, I'm really mad at the mom right now. <laughs> so we're, we'll are we see how this one goes. I don't know. Um, I have a hard time with uh, moms abandoning their children stories, um, as you can imagine. Um, but maybe, maybe this mom will turn out to be all right. We'll see. Anyway, that's where I'm at uh, right now. And I just wanted to check in. I will check in again later. And let's just talk for a minute about this situation right here. So these are the last six issues of The Atlantic, which you guys all know I subscribe to. Um, and I am really, oops, I am really behind in my reading. You can see the top three um, issues. I have read most of those issues. There's just a few articles in each of them that I still need to read. But these bottom three, uh, I think I've read maybe an article or two in the one on the far left. Um, this one right here, I've read a couple of articles. I really love the cover of that one. Um, but these two here, uh, I have not read at all. And so the problem is right now, all the stuff I would have been highly interested in um, just feels like it's not that important at the moment as we are in the middle of a pandemic. So I'm having a hard time like even wanting to pick one of these up, but um, it is starting to bother me that I am, have six issues on the go. So yeah, I don't know what the rest of you guys feel about periodicals right now. Like other than the daily news, um, which I am trying to limit my intake of, so I don't like overly freak myself out I don't really know about these like sort of broader issue news things and like how to even deal with them yeah so I thought I'd show you my home office uh, set up here for working from home during the coronavirus you can see I've set up a table and I wanted to put a tablecloth on it but the only one I, ones I have are Christmassy <laughs> so I have um you know, this nice plastic green holly leaf tablecloth. So that's not ideal, but it keeps the surface covered anyway. I have this nice map, which was up here already, which I love. And then I'm using my hope chest for like my laying out all my stuff, my files and whatnot. So it's a fairly good setup, I think. Nice view out the windows. Um, and it's pretty bright up here. So it keeps me... Uh, you know, awake and stuff when I'm trying to work. It's not bad. If you've got to work from home, it's nice to have a place where you can, you know, close it away at the end of the day and uh, not have to look at it and not have to pack it all up and all of that. And um, it's working for me. See my top 50 nonfiction list still up there. The crib for the grandbaby. <laughs> this is, you know, the guest bedroom slash library. Here's the bookshelves. Um, and now, work from home office. Hey everyone, I figure I better wrap this vlog up now. It's Sunday night, um, I am done reading for the night. My eyes are so tired, <laughs> but I got a lot of reading done. So I am excited by uh, my success in the read uh, 24 and 48 readathon. I read about 12 hours total, about six hours on Saturday six hours today um, so I feel very uh, accomplished I finished my audiobook today my uh, audiobook romance novel that I was working on Hello Stranger by Lisa Kleypas it was awesome it was awesome I know I said this the last time I talked about a book in the Ravenel series but this one was my favorite so far so um, just such a good book the the, the two main characters, Garrett uh, is the lady doctor, and um, oh, now his name's gone right out of my head, Ransom, the man, um, he, he works, uh, he's a spy, and she's a doctor, and it's just awesome, their relationship, very much a relationship of equals, and uh, 
none of that sort of patronizing um, stuff that happens in some romance, historical romance novels, where the guy, uh, you know, sort of patronizes the woman and treats her like she's a child and all that stuff. Um, like he knows everything and she knows nothing and he has to like teach her everything. None of that in this book at all. Just two equals who meet each other, like each other, and develop a relationship during a very stressful and trying time um, external to their relationship. Awesome, lots of great historical detail. Definitely highly recommend. So I've also spent some more time reading this book, which is upside down. I'm right, get this right for you guys to see the title, Shark Drunk. Um, Shark Drunk is nonfiction about two guys who are up in northern part of Norway fishing for the Greenland shark. Lots of um, natural history about sharks and other marine life. Lots of beautiful descriptions about the ocean and um, being near the ocean during different seasons and just beautiful descriptions of, of what the water looks like and what the currents, how they act and uh, all that. Um, I'm about a hundred pages into this one, very much enjoying that. And I've also spent some time reading SPQR by Mary Beard. Uh, this is the book about Roman history that I'm buddy reading with Britta. Uh, this is just so good. We're almost done. I'm like on page 475 or something of this one. So we've only got a little bit more to go. We'll be finishing this one up this week. So that's it. That's everything that I've read during the readathon. It has been great to focus on reading and sort of spend less time um, like just scrolling social media and constantly checking news updates and all that sort of thing. I've done a little bit of that, but tried to really minimize it this weekend. And I think it was extremely good for my mental health. Um, also, I have to really shout out audiobooks this time of um, at this during this time when things are so you know, we're all feeling really distracted. The audiobook really helped me. Um, I could listen to the audiobook and do like mindless house chores. Like I cleaned the oven this weekend and, you know, cleaned the bathroom and just did all those kinds of chores. It's just so enjoyable to listen to a book when you're doing it. So anyway, I hope you're all doing well and you all found some good books to read this weekend. Take care of yourselves out there and I'll talk to you later.